being at a net worth of 230 billion, roughly, being perceived as the richest person on earth. Well, I, th I think Putin any... is significantly richer than me. You really do, yeah? Yes. <laughs> There's something you have to understand about the Forbes billionaire list. It's not true. It is a complete lie. Here's why. Most people on the Forbes billionaire list, like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, are there because they have no choice. Most of their money is in public companies, so it's insanely easy to get a good estimate of how much they're worth. Plus, most people on the list made their money in the last few decades. While there have been centuries of banking families, industrialists, royal families, that have all been accumulating wealth way longer than the Forbes list has. And you're telling me that no one has more generational wealth than Elon Musk? Individuals and families who are truly wealthy, I'm talking old money wealth, they don't want the world to know how rich they are. If you have a lot of wealth that can be taken, that can be taxed, that can be pillaged or even seized, why would you want to flaunt your wealth? If you made your money in a shady or controversial way, like banking, fraud, or being a dictator, why would you want the world to know how much you're worth? And that's where our guy Vladimir Putin comes in. He's ruled the biggest country on earth with an iron fist for 18 years. Multi-billionaire Russian oligarchs have to answer to his every beck and call, or they risk getting their wealth taken from them, being thrown in prison, exiled, assassinated, or all of the above. Putin runs one of the most corrupt governments in the world. And yet, when you look at his wealth on paper, it tells the story of a humble civil servant living off an even humbler salary. According to the Kremlin, Putin only makes around $140,000 a year. By presidential standards, that's not much. His public assets include two small apartments in Russia, a trailer worth $800, and three kind of cheap cars. On paper, Putin is such a selfless leader. He can't be corrupt, he only drives a Lada. And when asked about how much money he really has, his go-to reply is always, I am the wealthiest man, not just in Europe, but in the whole world. I collect emotions. I am wealthy in that the people of Russia have twice entrusted me with the leadership of a great nation such as Russia. I believe that that is my greatest wealth. So noble, right? Over the years, reports have come out that Vladimir Putin isn't just rich, he is filthy rich. In fact, most estimates put his net worth at around $285 billion, a nice and easy $20 billion above Elon Musk. And what has that $285 billion bought him, off the record? At least 700 cars, 58 planes and helicopters, a $1.4 billion mansion with its own ice hockey rink, casino, nightclub, and amphitheater, where just one toilet brush in the mansion costs $850, and an insanely expensive watch collection, which is one watch costing half a million dollars. In literally two decades, Vladimir Putin went from a low-level civil servant to being the richest man in the world, and no one knows for sure how. Turns out there's two theories to how Putin secretly became the world's richest man. Most billionaires on the Forbes list got there because of their business. But today, finding that right business idea, that right opportunity is tricky. It feels like everything has already been done and there's no room for innovation. But what if you had access to thousands of great vetted business ideas at your fingertips? Well, that is where Trends comes in. Trends is an insanely valuable online knowledge hub for aspiring entrepreneurs. Basically, Trends specializes in sending you the next big startup ideas months before everyone else catches on. Here's how it works. Trends team of expert business analysts vet thousands of business ideas and analyzes market trends to send the best ones straight into your inbox every week. And in doing so, they save you months of research, thousands of dollars, and all the regret of not starting sooner. But that is not all. Trends also gives you access to an ambitious community of over 15,000 people all rooting for your success. And who knows, one of those 15,000 people could be your next co-founder or investor. Take Narek, for example. He was a Trends member when Trends uncovered signals that the indoor plant business was set to boom. Trends sent the signal out to their members, and Narek took that report and launched a D2C plant startup. Narek announced the project in the Trends community, received some valuable advice from other members, and started building. 40 days later, he raised $1.5 million in funding. Then there's Chris, who built his third-party logistics company, Send Eats, based on their article about the anything as a service trend. Chris has grown from one customer at around 200 orders a month to 27 customers with hundreds of thousands in revenue. Finding the next big idea just got easy. All you have to do is head to trends.co slash jtran with the link below and sign up. And if you follow that link, you'll also get a 7-day trial of Trends for just $1. That's trends.co slash jtran with the link below. Thanks to Trends for sponsoring this video.
It's the summer of the year 2000 in Moscow. 21 of Russia's richest men, the oligarchs, arrive at the Kremlin for a special meeting. Under President Boris Yeltsin, they've had years of free reign to do whatever they wanted, but Putin is about to put them in their place. As the newly elected president of Russia, Vladimir Putin knows all too well how corrupt the oligarchs are. But instead of arresting or fining them, he offers them a deal. Pledge their absolute loyalty to him as the new president, and they get to keep their billions, their houses, yachts, and private jets. To the oligarchs, it seems like a good enough deal. Sure, Putin may not be as easy to control as Boris Yeltsin, but it's either obey him or face his wrath. So the 21 men agree. And for three years, everything runs as smoothly as expected. Until a man named Mikhail Khodorkovsky is arrested. For years, Mikhail had been making millions from Russian corruption, and now suddenly he wants to call out Putin for not doing anything to stop it. In February 2003, Mikhail picks a fight with Putin on live TV. A few months later, he's conveniently arrested and charged with fraud and tax evasion. Mikhail was sentenced to 9 years in jail, but instead, he gets sent to a Siberian labor camp. To all the oligarchs out there, the message was clear, don't bite the hand that feeds you. But for Putin, a warning isn't enough. So he gathers the oligarchs again. This time, the terms of the deal aren't as simple. This time, he wants a 50-50 split. 50% 50 of all the oligarchs' money in exchange for their freedom. As president, Putin gets to choose who lives or dies, who gets to keep their businesses, and who gets sent to prison. It's only fair he gets something in return for his protection, right? Basically, Putin told them, if you agree, I'll take 50% of your money, but you'll get to keep your businesses, your houses, and your freedom. If you don't accept this offer, I'll take 100% of everything you have, and you'll end up like our guy Mikhail in Siberia. It's easy to see why most of the oligarchs agreed. According to Bill Bowder, a top American investor in Russia, this deal scored Putin an easy $200 billion back in the early 2000s, half of everything the oligarchs owned. After nearly two decades in power, it's easy to imagine how that $200 billion became $285 billion as long as Putin kept hustling more wealthy Russians into his deal. Every time an oligarch got assassinated or exiled for criticizing the government, Putin would swoop in and collect his 100%. As long as the loyal oligarchs keep making money, Putin will keep getting richer. Or at least that's one theory. As the leader of Russia, Putin has every Russian politician at his beck and call. He also has the ultimate say over who becomes minister of what. And Putin has used that power to make himself one of the most protected presidents in the world. For decades, he's brought his old KGB and FSB friends into politics. He's appointed these people of force, or Silovaki, into all the top government positions. The military strongmen aren't the only ones benefiting from important positions in the governments. This is Arkady Rottenberg, Putin's childhood friend and judo partner. In the early 2010s, Arkady received over $7 billion in state contracts leading up to the 2014 Sochi Olympics. He's also the co-owner of Russia's biggest gas and electricity supply line construction company. Today, he's worth around $2 billion. Who appointed him to this position? Vladimir Putin, of course. Meet Kirill Shamalov, Putin's ex-son-in-law. Shamalov became a billionaire at just 34 years old after getting a major loan from Gazprom Bank so he could buy a 17% stake in a company owned by one of Putin's closest friends. Along with the Silovaki, Putin recruits everyone he trusts, from family members to friends to bodyguards, to get involved with state-owned companies. He makes sure that they become leaders of all the biggest companies and get the best contracts. And in return, he gets a generous cut of their success. The money might not be in Putin's own accounts. The houses, cars, yachts, jets might not be under his name. But control is the name of the game here, not ownership on paper. As long as you have de facto control of an asset, like a house or a super yacht, meaning that you get to do whatever you want with it as if you owned it, you get all the benefits of ownership without alerting the public to how much money you have. This is Svetlana Krivonogik, a former cleaning lady turned multimillionaire. She's also the owner of a $4 million luxury apartment in the heart of Monaco, one of the most expensive in the world. And no, she didn't work herself out of poverty. She's Vladimir Putin's alleged mistress. Well, one of them. Вы просто дело, здесь жила Светлана Кривоногих, она стала миллиардером, а здесь она начинала свой путь. Мы делаем про нее фильм. Они здесь не живут, а сдают. Мать сдает. А, -а, -а. а, -а, -а это какая? Наверное. Вот, вот это вот. Вот это? Да, там никого нет, там это не русские живут, они на, на работе. 
Обычная женщина, мать у нее. Писала. Обычная, да? Конечно. Но она же богатой тоже стала. Да какая она богатая? Надежда Михайловна, что ли, она вон на кривоногих вот ее глупости какие-то. Я разу никогда не приезжал, никто не видела. For years, people have been trying to figure out how Vladimir Putin can be the richest man in the world, but have no paper trails leading to him and his money. One of those answers could be Svetlana, or whatever his other mistress names are. After the Panama Papers and the Pandora Papers were released, we all got a pretty vague look at the offshore accounts owned by Putin's friends, family, and mistresses. And boy, were they full. I'm not in a position to give you figures, but what I can say is that he supposedly draws a state salary of something like $110,000 a year. That is not an accurate statement of the man's wealth. Uh, and he has long-time uh, training and practices in terms of how to mask his actual wealth. Is Vladimir Putin corrupt? In our view, yes. I know that I know from my business partner that Putin asked for a share in the business. Initially, they were asking for 15%. He called them greedy He managed to talk them down to 4%. Obviously, this wasn't registered in any official papers. Another theory as to how Putin has all his money is that he uses the names of the people closest to him to open offshore accounts all around the world for him to store his money in. These are documents from one of the offshore companies that diverted millions of dollars to the palace. And according to Kolesnikov, the owner of this company was Putin himself. Obviously, none of these people will ever steal a cent because everyone knows what happens if you cross Putin. Putin might not have anything linking him to billions, but everyone around him does, from his daughter's godfather to his former mistress. Has Gennady Timchenko been holding wealth for Vladimir Putin, do you think? It's, uh, I don't know if I would put it exactly that way in terms of holding his wealth. I can say that he has been tremendously enriched personally by Vladimir Putin, as have another handful of people in Putin's inner circle. Uh, and of course, there are allegations, suspicions that he holds tremendous amounts of Putin's wealth. From Mr. Timchenko himself, that uh, you see, sometimes he could uh, just pointing up in, in talks and saying that uh, uh, everything is controlled by Mikhail Vanch. Mikhail Vanch is a nickname for the Putin. And when he's not hiding his money with his friends, he's likely using some of it to buy up gold. Russia has some of the biggest gold reserves in the world, worth around $120 billion. Obviously, not all of it belongs to Putin, but I wouldn't be surprised if a good chunk does. No one is ever allowed to talk about Putin's personal life on TV or social media in Russia, so it's not like anyone is going to risk their life to share something as sensitive as where he hides his money. My guess is that he uses a mix of all the strategies we talked about today. All we really know is that if Putin is the richest man in the world, the only chance we have of really finding out is maybe if he dies. Do you think that Putin is the world's richest man? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're new here, my name is Jake, and this is one of the biggest channels for documentaries on money, power, and crime. So if you like this one, click that subscribe button below for multiple documentaries every single week, just like this one for free. And if you want longer and more controversial ones that I can't post publicly, you can click that join button below. And if you join and you don't think it's worth it, I will refund you the money, just email me. Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. Stay dangerous out there, and I will see you guys in the next one.